Hi there and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about how to can some roast. Let's get into it. I started by defrosting some of these big roasts that we have that we received from my in-laws when they moved. They left a whole freezer full of food and so we stuffed as much of it as we could into our own freezers but there was just too much and so I decided this was a good opportunity to get canning. I have done some pressure canning before but I wanted to practice a little bit more before we head into the big gardening season where we'll have lots of food to put up and preserve. And so this was the perfect opportunity to get some canning done. So I started by defrosting the meat and then cutting them into strips so that I can get meat chunks that were in cubes about two inches. And then I started loading them into the jars. Now this is going to be raw packed meat, meaning there will be no liquid added. This is according to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I'll leave a link down below in the description box so you can go check out the specific directions for canning chunks of meat. It's important that you follow these canning instructions. There is some leeway with making your own recipes and adding whatever you want, although these recipes on this website have been tested and it's just a way to make sure that you are canning in a safe manner and avoiding any kind of danger that could be associated with botulism or just canning in an unsafe manner. Check out that website and make sure that you are checking what your elevation is and for how long you need to pressure can and at what weight. After I cut all the meat into chunks, I added the salt on top. We actually ran out of fine salt this week and so I'm using coarse salt here. And then I started by putting on the lids. And thankfully before I put them all on, I remembered that it's important to wipe down the jars with some vinegar. I just wipe the rims to make sure that there is no, there is no oily bits or any meat juice that got onto the rims that would inhibit a really good seal with the lids. It's always good to do this if you're canning any kind of oily or meaty bits because it would be a shame to go through the whole process and then have some of the jars not seal. It just takes a long time and it would be such a waste and so I always make sure to take this step seriously and wipe down all of the rims. And then I sealed up my jars with the lid and the rings and I usually tighten them just a little bit extra and I usually tighten them a little bit extra tight. My husband has a real tough arm and I guess sometimes I really need to tighten them hard to get a good seal. And I tighten my jars just about finger tight and a little bit more with my elbow. And then I tighten my jars. I place a rack until there's the a nice of the And then I tighten my jars. And I pour about two and to then three I inches of jars hot water so there would be a good pot. I boil this in my kettle just to make it go faster. Pour that into the pot and then I add in my jars. So I can fit six quart jars into our all American. I think we have the nine two one all American pressure canner. I'll leave a link down below if you're interested in this exact one that we have, but we can fit in six quart jars and a few pint jars on top of them but I can do two layers of quart jars just one layer and then before I secure the lid on the canner I use a rag and a little bit of olive oil just to rub on the seal and make sure that that metal to metal seal will be well lubricated and not get stuck and then I secure the lid onto the canner at this specific notch you'll see there's an arrow pointing to a little groove in the middle and then this little lip that hooks underneath this metal part. And then I start tightening up the bolts. You'll see I grab the opposite ends and then I'm just lightly tightening them initially and then going back a second time and tightening the bolts really tightly, making sure that the lid is tightening to the base evenly all around. And then I turn on the heat and let the pot come up to a boil. And how I know that's happening is when there is a stream of steam coming from this vent pipe. As soon as I see steam coming out, I turn on my timer for 10 minutes and make sure that that steam is running continuously for 10 minutes 
before I add the weight. I grab this all-American canner pressure cooker instruction booklet every time and read through this one page that just explains it really simply and then I make sure that I follow these steps just to familiarize myself with it as I start canning. No matter what canner you have, make sure that you are following their canning instructions, read carefully, and follow all of the steps to make sure that you are doing this in a safe manner. That's what I'm doing here and so I'm giving you the instructions for my canner, which may be different from your canner, so make sure that you're consulting your canner's manual. Now you should check on the FDA website to make sure what weight to use for whatever elevation you're at. Here where we live, we use 10 pounds of weight, so after 10 minutes, I put on the weight at 10 pounds. And then I turn my stove down and wait until I hear this weight jiggle about one to four times in a minute. Now after you've canned for a little while, you'll know exactly at what temperature your stove needs to be at to hear the jiggle within that one to four times in a minute range. For me on our stove, I know that's just above number four on my biggest element. Now once the weight starts to jiggle, I start a timer and just make sure how many times it jiggles and stops and then jiggles again within one minute. Now you can start counting the processing time from the first jiggle as long as you're sure that it is jiggling within one to four times in that minute. Again, that's for my pressure canner, so you should make sure you read your manual and see when you can start counting your own processing time. You can adjust the heat on your stove until the pressure regulator weight jiggles only one to four times per minute. And the processing time will be dependent on your elevation, what recipe you're making, and if you want more information, you should check out the FDA website and follow their guidelines there. For my elevation, the processing time for broth is 30 minutes. If at any point the weight stops jiggling and doesn't jiggle again, you'll have to start all over again and somehow the heat and pressure has gotten adjusted and needs to be corrected and start all over again. Now when the timer runs up, when the food is cooked for the proper pressure time for the amount of time it needed to, you can turn off the heat source and then wait until that pressure comes all the way down to zero. For us, this takes about half an hour or around there. I wait until that dial comes all the way down and then I take off the weight and I set my timer for two minutes and wait for that final steam to just release. After two minutes, I use a cloth to loosen all of the knobs so that I can take off the lid. Be very careful, the steam will be very hot so you want to be real careful when you lift off the lid. And find a place that you can put this hot lid. It was kind of a busy week here and so I took off the lid when the pressure was done here and actually left these jars right in the water. There just wasn't time to take them out right away. But the next day I took them out and this is what they looked like. You can see in the lower half the meat is covered by just the natural juices that came out through the cooking process. And then there's a line with some of the fat that came out and then there is some meat above the line. Now this is totally fine. This is what happens when you raw pack. There will inevitably be some of the content that is above any kind of liquid line. Because these jars are totally sealed, this is fine and will preserve the food until we eat it. And the way I make sure that these jars are really well sealed is by taking off the rings and making sure that that lid is on there securely. I do this for all of my jars before I put them away just to make 100% sure I'm not putting anything in the cover that didn't actually seal. And I mean, I will discover this later on if I grab a jar that is loose still. But what's nice is if I catch it here, we can just eat that jar right away instead of packing it and letting that food spoil. Well, thank you for watching. I hope that you have found this helpful. If you have, would you consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel? And that way you can also catch some of our upcoming content. All right, have a nice day. Cheers.